you were married for how long? Had two kids. Nine years. Nine years. Um, did you know what? Where, where did he work, and how was he able to do that? At the time, he left. He was working in Sunbury in a plant. It had nothing to do with the tapes. And then he remarried. We divorced, and he remarried and moved out to Illinois. And I didn't know it, what he what he did there or anything about it. And then when he became ill and came back, I was remarried, and so was he. So that's how it all came about. Did he tell you how he did it or what he did? No. He just presented you with just these said things. these are, and there were two large turquoise metal. I think I had scotch written on it. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Super Bowl one, and I think one was marked first half and one was marked second half. And they were evidently very good and very well vacuum sealed because they were up in my attic. Up in my attic in the heat and in the cold and but, but let me ask you this. So he gave them to you. What did you do with them right away? Took them home and put them up in, like, where do you put something you don't know where to put? Either in your basement or your attic. So that's where, that's where it was. And then my husband and I talked about it. And he was, like, very skeptical. And I was, too. So it, they just stayed up in the attic. And then what happened? Who, who found them? My son's best friend. They were maybe eight, nine, ten years old. And they would go up in the attic and play. And they were doing up there playing one day and playing a board game. So my uh, son's best friend, they're still best friends to this day, Clint Hepner. He's from Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. And he uh, was up there anyway about, this was maybe eight, nine, ten years ago. He called Troy. And he said, Troy, do you remember when we were up in your attic playing board game? Troy said, I, how can I remember way back when? He said, well, I just read in Sports Illustrated about this Super Bowl. And he said, there were two big tapes, uh, th uh, metal cases up in your attic that said Super Bowl one. And he said, they, they called it, what did they call it? The Lost Treasure or something like that in, in Sports Illustrated. And hang up and call your mom. I bet that's the tapes they're talking about. They said they're in an attic in Pennsylvania. How Sports Illustrated got wind of it, we don't know. So he called me and I said, yeah, they are. So that's where it went. Then Troy was already here and he talked about it, got a lawyer and took it from there. But NFL has been really, really nasty about it. And there's like, you know, we have the copyright. There's nothing you can do. We'll sue you. We'll, you know, you'll, you're in violation. Nobody, nobody can have it. It's. What do you, I mean, this is kind of crazy. It's the Super Bowl is the largest sports spectacle in America. He's, you're right. And you have a copy of the first Super Bowl. Right. I mean, what do you, what did you think about that? Are you... Well, at the time, it didn't mean a thing to me. I was like, and we were, my husband and I were skeptical about the whole thing. But as time went on, and Troy got the lawyer, and they contacted NFL, and we went round and round and round. And like Richard said to me from the New York Times, how do you feel? I said, okay, I feel excited. I feel sad, and I feel frustrated. Because you have something that's supposed to be so wonderful, and... You can't share it with anyone. You can't uh, share it with your friends. You're, it, you're just at a loss. So it's, my son said maybe someday he's going to write a book and call it the greatest, the greatest story never told. The greatest football whatever story never told. But uh, we're at the point now where if nothing ever can come of it, we'd like to asked Sotheby's in New York to auction it off free and give the whole thing to charity. I mean, it's, at least it would do some good. It's, uh, it's very frustrating.